So as you know, looking expensive doesn't have anything to do with wearing designer labels from head to toe because we know we all know that one person who we despite, you know, having the labels, they still look a little tacky. We, we know that person, right? Looking expensive is part state of mind and part what you wear. You need to feel expensive as much as you look expensive. So in this video, I'm going to be going over some things that you might have overlooked in your quest to look expensive despite your bank account not getting the rich vibes. And side note, this is not about the cheap way out. Uh oh, co coins will be had in this video, but I'm going to explain ways that you can get the most bang for your buck, so keep watching. <laughs> expensive in these <laughs> how you cannot look expensive with the grandma drawers on y'all <laughs> listen you can be comfortable and sexy at the same damn time I don't know why people think you got to choose one. Oh, I can't be sexy if I want to be comfortable oh, I can't be comfortable if I want to be sexy you can do both like look I just did a campaign with JCPenney with their Ombriel line and they have some really cute affordable panties. You don't have to spend a lot to get really nice looking comfortable underwear. I'll link these below if you want to check them out and they all don't have to be black and they all don't have to be super lacy. Like these are super comfortable. These are from H&M. There's tons of places where you can get really good looking panties and not have to spend a ton. And no, it's not about pleasing your partner and wearing what looks cute to your partner. It's about you. I know that when I have one of a nice pair of panties that I tend to glide, right? I ain't strutting the knees, I'm sorry. I just bought these for demonstration purposes. Like this is like a freaking parachute. Okay, now let's talk clothes. Okay, first of all, there's this big misconception out there that you have to wear a new outfit for everything that you do and you can't be seen wearing the same outfit twice. Like, I don't know who made that up, but they hating. You do not need to have 50 million pieces of clothing. You just need key pieces based on your lifestyle that look amazing on your body, that look good together so they can mix and match and be interchanged a bunch of times in what they call a capsule wardrobe. Now listen, the best way to look expensive in your clothing is to look like your clothing was made for you. And the best way to do that, despite some hesitation from folks, is to dress in things that look great for your body type. Folks will, you can wear whatever you like. Don't listen to nobody's rules. You to death, right? And that's true, you can wear what you want because who is going to stop you? But if you want pieces that you are going to love, that you are going to keep wearing over and over, that you love to wear, the key is making sure that they look good for your coloring, in your body type, and your lifestyle. Now where you gonna find that information out at? Luckily there's a channel right here with an ongoing series on how to dress for your body type. So make sure you check it out and subscribe to this channel and don't miss a thing. Coat. So we are in the fall season. Winter is just a few moments away. If this video does well, I'll do updates of it for the warmer seasons. But when it comes to the fall winter, having a statement coat is definitely something that you want to do as an easy way to look expensive because the, all the stuff that you have on underneath can be just BS, right? So here's what you do. You look at the fall runway shows. Look at all of the statement coats. Inhale it, exhale it. Then you're going to take that knowledge and those looks and you head to your local thrift or your online thrift and look for the bare bones. You're probably not going to find replicas of the runway coats at, you know, at the five and nine, but you will find something that is probably really close that you can, through tailoring, through styling, you can make it look like a million bucks. Consider things like maybe cutting off the sleeves, changing the buttons, adding a belt, maybe even adding a layer over something, like maybe a long vest over a leather coat, use your imagination because you can take a coat that you thrifted for maybe like 20 bucks and make it look like it is worth thousands. Okay, shoes. Cause cheap shoes just be real loud, don't they? Like why cheap shoes gotta tell on us so much, right? So here's the thing. Instead of having 50 million pairs 
of the very cheap looking trendy shoes. How about instead we think of two to three, I'll give you four, okay? We don't want to overdo it. Quality, well-made, good looking stylish shoes that may not be the big trend of the season, but that's okay. You want something more timeless and classic because then it's gonna last you longer. That works well with your lifestyle and what you already have in your closet. How about that? Now, if I only had to splurge on two to three pairs of shoes for the fall winter season, one would definitely be an over the knee boot, preferably a flat because then I could kind of wear that to run errands and stuff like that and still be stylish but comfortable, right? I would also get a pair of combat boots. Last year I got the Prada ones, which I still love. I have to pull them out as soon as it gets cold enough. And you know, I live in New York City. It's gonna snow, snow probably a lot and ice and whatnot. I'm gonna need a pair of like durable uh, winter boots as well. If you're looking for good quality shoes that aren't going to like bust your budget, look at places like Nordstrom Rack, TJ Maxx, Marshall. And if you really love designer and you don't mind getting secondhand, sites like The Real Real, Fashion File, you know, sites of that ilk will elicit some options for that designer itch that you have without having to pay full price. All right, y'all, hair and makeup. One of the best things that you can do for yourself is to get your hair cut into a style that suits your face shape and your lifestyle. If you have a little bit of extra coin, get a custom color job. Now here's the thing, this is, this is probably gonna cost you a pretty penny because I want you to go to someone who is amazing at what they do because an amazing haircut and color job can change your life. It can make your hairstyling process be much quicker when you're trying to get dressed and it's just gonna make you look pulled together even when you know, you got on a bullshit outfit. <laughs> Listen, even if you wear wigs, especially if you wear wigs. She had a little too much to drink, you know, don't mind her, you know, it's okay. Even if it's a synthetic wig, I mean, these are all human hair from Big Chop Hair, but even if you're wearing a synthetic wig, I don't care how cheap the wig is, get it cut to fit your face. It is going to take the wig from looking like Auntie Myrtle to looking like some. I take the wigs that I buy from my friend Melissa's company, Big Chop Hair, and I take them to my other friend, my hairstylist, Gabrielle Corny, and I have her cut them to suit my face before I wear them. I mean, there have been some times where I was like, okay, let me just put this wig on real quick, and I know instantly like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, don't do that again, it needs Gabby's cut. I've even had her custom color some wigs because like, no, I'm not fooling nobody that that's my real hair, but it just looks, you know, it looks a lot better when you have it cut to suit your face. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you, Gabby costs a pretty penny. I pay my friends what they, what they charge the public, I pay my friends, right? Well, the exception of the wigs, I get that discount, you know? The cost associated with doing this can be up there in price, but it's not something that you're gonna be doing like every week, so you pay the money that time, and you have a great style that's gonna look good on you. And it's gonna elevate your outfits and your looks as well. <sighs> Aggressive brows just doesn't really sing I vacation in the Maldives, does it, right? Like, listen, makeup is something that it takes practice to learn. You're not gonna just pick up a makeup brush one day and then the next you're like some pro makeup artist. Everybody has to practice and keep doing it to get good. But you, you gotta learn how to match that foundation, right? Because the wrong undertone can make your skin look a little sickly and and expensive people don't look sickly, you know? You also need to learn to blend that mamma jam. A poorly executed makeup job can, it can make you look a little cheap. I got a little video on Instagram that talks about things that you do with your makeup that can make your skin look bad. I'll link it below so you can check it out. But you wanna avoid those things. Now I'm a fan of a beat face, right? But I still like it to look somewhat natural. There's certain things that, you know, like a lot of these, and it's beautiful, it's art, right? But there's always a time and a place for everything. Some of these like cut creases and 50 million colors and stuff like that, it's really artistic, it's really beautiful. But if you are looking to look more of a caliber, darling, try to get as natural as possible. And that doesn't mean that you can't wear color because I'm gonna put up some images of some beautiful women wearing color where the makeup job looks really good and tasteful and it looks amazing on their skin. And you can do your highlighter. Highlighter, ooh, there was a time when people were going a little crazy with the highlighter. You can still do highlighter and have it look really pretty like this picture here. Now, as I said, I'm a fan of a beat face. I like to highlight and contour. Highlighting and contouring 
adds dimension back into your face after it gets kind of lost when you put your foundation on but it doesn't have to be overdone. Same thing with nails. Now, the funny thing about nails is like the more outlandish that your nails look, the more expensive it is to actually get them put on. So it kind of like, well, what you mean I don't look expensive? My nails cost me about a buck, buck 50. Now, nails don't have to be short to be classy. Just avoid having like, if you're gonna do the nail tips, just avoid not having like, you know, two or three of them missing. And I'm talking to myself here because I recently did a video on my skincare channel where, you know, a couple of nails was missing and I didn't really have time to soak them off. So I'm talking to myself here too. And if you're wearing your natural nails, try to avoid having like the chipping. That's usually my downfall, which is why sometimes I keep my nails so plain, but my friend Kalina has a line, Jesse Monroe nail cape with some beautiful colors. I love to like wear those, but I gotta be better about, you know, and it's kind of take it off, take it off. You know what I'm saying? We, we all working together. We're all works in progress. Anyway, what are some expensive looking things that you do when you broke AF? Leave them in the comments. Now, I would like to come back and do more versions of this video because, you know, they, they do well on YouTube and, you know, I'm trying to grow this channel, you know what I'm saying? But uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you thumbs up to like it. Make sure you also subscribe to this channel because I'm getting a lot of y'all looking with your looking behind, looking at my videos and you're not subscribed. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more videos like this. Turn that notification bell on. Follow me on social. The links will be in the description box. <sighs> Do expensive looking people own terrorist cats? Like, I don't know. And I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.